Image sizing in Photoshop is relatively simple and straightforward. Although having said that, there are some key aspects that you should have a basic understanding of in order to ensure the quality of your results. Image size is located in the main navigational menu underneath image, image size. Now, as you can see, before I get started talking about image size, I have four duplicate images here. And that's primarily to demonstrate four different types of sizing that we're going to actually take a look at. When you first open up the image size window, you'll be presented with the pixel dimensions of your document or image, along with the actual file size. So as you can see there, mine is 72.8 megabytes in file size. And then we have the width and the height of my current image, and that's specified in pixels. You'll also see if you actually click on pixels, you can actually change them to percent. Now, if you wish to actually resize your images for the web, then you need to essentially do it in pixels because obviously screen sizes are based on pixels. And this is essentially where you do it. Now, of course, I actually prefer to use the save for web feature that's actually listed underneath file in the main navigational menu. And I believe there is a video, an entire video on it in uh, sub, sub module number one for Photoshop magic. So this is essentially where you want to change your pixel dimensions for an image. Uh, underneath that, we have the document size. Now this will actually give you the exact dimensions of your image and also the resolution. So once again, we have the width, the height, and also the resolution here. So you can go and actually choose to change the uh, actual uh, measurement unit that is currently being presented to you, which at the moment is in centimeters, I could change that to inches or millimeters according to, you know, my own personal preferences, uh, in order to actually adjust the size of my image. And in order to, and to actually do that, it's just as simple as actually going in and actually changing the document size. So I could say I want this to be 40 centimeters in width. And that's gone ahead and actually adjusted the document size and you'll notice that the actual pixel size has changed as well and also the file size so it's, it was 72 meg uh, large and now it's 85 so that will actually change with your document size so that's interesting to keep an eye on as well so below these dimensions we have the resolution and that's defaulted to pixels per inch so when it comes to actually printing your images, you want to make sure that you have the correct resolution set. So this sometimes is determined by the actual photographic printer that you're using or sending your files to. Now, a good starting point for your resolution uh, would be to set your resolution to at least 254 pixels per inch if you're intending on printing your images which is actually the standard metric size, which most photographers don't actually realize. But in this case, you'll actually see my image is set to 300 pixels per inch, which seems to be a, sort of a, an even standard right across the board for most photographers and most printers as well. Now for images that actually go to the web, you're most likely gonna actually need to change the resolution. Although having said that, images sized for the web are entirely pixel based. So it doesn't really matter what resolution that you actually have set. But a good starting point for images to actually go to the web would be 72 pixels, as you can see here. And that just reduces the image sort of to a, a rough size that is going to be acceptable for web images. So it's not too large. As you can see here, it's now only 4.91 megabytes in size. So it's something that most, um, you know, things like Facebook and Twitter and all those other types of services will actually be able to uh, handle when you actually upload to them. Beside each width and height in both the pixel dimensions and document size, you'll notice a little bracket with a link icon beside it. This indicates that there is actually constrained proportions and that the actual constrained proportions checkbox, which is down the bottom here, is actually checked. So if I uncheck that, you'll notice that little bracket and link icon will disappear. Now this simply means that the image can't be distorted or the proportion of the image can't be distorted. Uh, so you're gonna always keep that same aspect ratio with regards to the width and the height values. But if for some 
odd reason that you actually want to distort your images, then it's as simple as going to uh, uncheck your constraint proportions and then actually changing the width and height accordingly. But as, as I say, this is something that you're most likely just going to leave checked. Now above constrained proportions, we have scale styles. Now you want to have this always checked primarily because when enabled, it's actually going to scale proportionally any effects or text that you may have on your image uh, in relation to your resizing. So it'll keep it at that same sort of proportion to when you actually first set it up at a particular resolution. So that's quite important. If you don't check that, then that, they'll actually stay at one resolution while you actually resize the image and then it'll all sort of be out of whack and it'll look a little bit, little bit strange uh, because there'll obviously be different sizings. Now also underneath that we have the resample image. Now this is perhaps the most important area within image size. This is what actually determines the type of interpolation that's actually used for your resizing. So as you can see there are five options here that are available to you to utilize. The first being nearest neighbor. Now utilizing the nearest neighbor as your interpolation method is fast but it's actually less precise than any of the other methods with regards to actually replicating pixels in an image. So I don't recommend that you use that one at all. Underneath nearest neighbor, we have bilinear. Now this is a method that actually adds pixels by averaging the color values of the surrounding pixels. Now it actually produces sort of a medium quality results. And it's also not a method that I recommend that you use. The three methods or three interpolation methods that I recommend you stick with are by cubic, by cubic smoother and by cubic sharper. Now by cubic is actually slower than nearest neighbor or by linear, but because of this is actually more precise uh, method of actually examining the values of surrounding pixels. Now it actually uses more complex calculations in order to actually achieve smoother tonal graduations. So this is an important detail when it comes to actually resizing your images. Now by cubic smoother and by cubic sharper are variations of by cubic. So by cubic smoother is a good method for enlarging images based on the original bicubic interpolation, but it's actually been designed to produce smoother results. And you'll see here it says best for enlargement. So that's one that I probably recommend you use when you're enlarging your images. Now underneath that we have bicubic sharper. Now bicubic sharper is actually a good method for reducing the size of your images based on the bicubic interpolation method and it actually enhances your images by adding a little bit of sharpening. So this method actually maintains a little bit more detail in the actual resampled image. Now if for some reason bicubic sharper over sharpens some of the areas of your image, you may choose to actually stick with the original bicubic. So let's actually take a look at actually resizing a couple of these images using each one of these interpolation methods just to see the difference that is actually achieved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go and select nearest neighbor, for example, and we might resize this image down to say a thousand pixels. So I'm going to click OK. So this one's nearest neighbor. And we'll blow it up. That's a hundred percent at the moment. So we'll now go to this image and we'll actually do the same. And we're going to stick it to a thousand pixels, but instead we might use the actual uh, bilinear, which I don't recommend you using, but we're just going to do it for this particular demonstration. So now that we have that, you'll notice there's quite a uh, considerable difference between those two there. See, this one uh, appears definitely sharper than this one. This is a lot softer. So I'll go to the next one, and what we'll actually do is go back to image, image size. We'll knock this one up to a thousand pixels and then we'll change that and we'll actually set it to uh, just a bicubic. We'll increase the size of that and then we'll do this final image and we'll actually use bicubic sharper. So this is the one that I usually recommend that you use when you're actually downsizing your images 
to go to the web. So then in some cases, it means that you don't have to actually sharpen your images again for web output, which can be very um, helpful. So as you can see there, we've got sort of four different examples. And as you can see, the bilinear looks a little bit crisp, and I think it, it looks a little bit jagged um, from what I can see on screen, whereas the bilinear one that's here actually looks quite soft. And the bicubic one looks not too bad, but the best one out of all of them has to be the bicubic sharper. So as you can see, it's added a little bit of sharpening there. It's actually nice and crisp. So any sharpening that I've applied to the full resolution file has uh, sort of been kept through the actual process of downsizing, uh, downsizing the actual photograph. So that's sort of a quick example. But if you do intend on actually enlarging your images, you really want to go to image size and actually choose either bicubic or by cubic smoother. And this will sort of reduce, uh, it'll actually give you a smoother uh, enlargement from your actual sizing. So overall, image size is a feature of Photoshop that I use every day as part of my editing workflow. With that said, it's important to first consider sizing your images accordingly inside of Camera Raw during the actual conversion process for optimal results.